Welcome everyone. My name is Michael. Uh, I'm the experiential director of Better Spaces. Uh, if you're new to Better Spaces, we partner with buildings and companies to create programs that help you connect, create, and perform at your highest potential. Uh, today's session is Build a Resilient Body. It's a series we've been doing, and today we're focusing on ankles and feet. Our instructor is Dr. Paul Kachoa. He received his doctorate of physical therapy from Mercy College and he has a BS in exercise physiology from Rutgers University as well. His treatment philosophy is move better, feel better, and play better. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat window. Dr. Paul will get to them at the end. Um, so whether you're watching this uh, live or uh, you're watching in the replay, I just wanna say thanks so much for being here. Uh, okay, without further ado, Dr. Paul, take it away. Thank you so much, Michael. Yes, hello, my name is Dr. Paul Kachoa, and this is a continuing series, the Resilient Body Series. We're going foot and ankle today, probably one of the most complex joints, the most neglected joints in the body. So let's get this started. We've got a lot to go over today. So let me get my slides up here. Resilient Body Series, foot and ankle. Let's get it started. Now, because I'm a physical therapist, I have to give you this disclaimer. If you've been to my talks before, you know that the information is very valuable and helpful, but is not designed for your individual issues. So if you are dealing with foot and ankle pain, make sure that you consult a medical professional. This is not medical advice. This is not, medi uh, this is not medical advice or physical therapy. It's just talk. We're just talking, right? And if you've been to my course or classes before, you know this saying that the body functions on this alternating pattern of mobility and stability. If that pattern is disrupted, pain or injury is the result. So when it comes to the foot and ankle, the foot needs to be a very stable surface and the ankle needs to be a very mobile joint. All right. And that pattern goes up the body right through here. Let's take a closer picture of that. Foot needs to be stable. Ankle needs to be mobile. We run into problems when the ankle gets really stiff and then there are compensatory changes that happen at the foot. And we're going to go into that right now. And that's basically our next slide. That's what I just said. The ankle becomes stiff, which causes foot problems, and the foot becomes too mobile, which causes ankle leg problems, all right? So when the roles are reversed, that's when we run into problems. All right, so stretches. We're gonna talk about stuff later on about stretches. You know, don't push through pain. If it hurts, don't do it. We wanna go gentle, um, you know, breathe, e inhaling and exhaling through the nose, making your inhale two seconds and uh, uh, four seconds exhale through the nose, that will help relax the muscle and it responds better to stretching when we're trying to mobilize those stuff. So if we're talking about soft tissue, stretching point A from point B, elongating that, that's going to be a 30 second hold. If we're going to do a joint mobilization, kind of making the joints move, that's going to be at least two minutes. All right. Our first thing, we're going to get up and then do this wall test. You got to find yourself a wall. All right. And you're going to put your hand right on the wall there, your toes, at your hand. So it's about four inches away from the wall. Then you're going to hold your ankle down and push your knee forward. You should be able to get your knee to touch the wall in this wall test. All right. So functionally, we need at least a four to five inch travel of that knee forward of the front part of your toes to qualify as functional ankle mobility. Now, why is that so important? We sit, we don't walk, we wear heels. It basically makes our ankles tight, which creates this issue here. People tend, have a tendency to lose the ability to squat. I screen and assess people all day, and I say, hey, show me your squat. And they can't get to this range of motion. And I say, all right, well, let's take a look at your hip. Let's take a, take a look at your knee. They can bend the knee. They could bend the hip within the functional range of motion. But the issue is, is that they can't dorsiflex or have that ankle mobility, which limits their ability to squat. And if you can't squat properly, then getting on in and out of a chair, going up and down stairs, lunging to go pick something up, those are the functional movements that um, get dysfunctional when you have poor ankle mobility. The next thing that I want to talk about is the big toe. The big toe needs to extend at least 80 to 90 degrees in relation to your foot bones. That's the red line right there. If we lose that ability, then you'll see what happens. That extension of that big toe is very, very important for walking. That's the position 
that your toe needs to be in as you push off, as you're walking. And that creates tension on the plantar fascia and creates a more stable surface for all the muscles up the leg to function from, right? If you do have plantar fasciitis or a tight ankle, then most commonly it gets associated with a bunion, all right? Your big toe starts to dive in towards your uh, other toes. And this happens because the body is looking for another point of mobility if the ankle is tight. So your body says, all right, I'm just gonna make another joint at the big toe and make the foot really, really unstable and mobile so that I can get around that tight ankle. And this is a, a better illustration of that plantar fascia. If your ankle is tight and you can't get that big toe extension, then that tension underneath there, that surface, that uh, connective tissue gets really, really taut. And it can result in pain at the heel, worse in the morning and better as the day progresses. And uh, bone spurs is another one if you let that go. All right. And how do we know if we have flat feet? Um, you know, a lot of people say, oh, yeah, I got flat feet. Well, you know what? This is a test that's really easy. All you do is just kind of either walk on sand or wet your foot and put it on a piece of paper and we see what kind of footprint you make, right? So that tells us like which is, um, you know, what type of foot posture you have. Flat is a pronated foot, a very, uh, un, um, a very collapsed arch versus high. If you have a high arch, that's not good either. It's a very stiff foot, right? You have to be able to kind of go into in and out, absorb that shock and have a good arch of support because what happens if your foot collapses and pronates, it turns the tibia, your lower leg inward, and that turns the femur inward, which causes whole problems either at the knee, the hip, the back, all that stuff, all right? All right, so now let's get into the good stuff. Let's talk about stretching, soft tissue mobilization. How do we get that big toe to function better? And uh, we'll go into a, 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 a better way to stretch out your calves. So let me just transition into my other camera here. I'm going to pull back. I've got a lot of toys here on the floor. The first thing that we're going to do, <clears throat> if you do have foot pain, is to get some type of implement. I've got a, uh, a wooden roll here, you know, rolling. I've got a little spiky ball. It's a little bit rubbery. And I've got a lacrosse ball and a trigger point ball. Now, the bigger the ball, the easier this will be. So you can really do anything you like. But the main thing is to spend some time going slowly underneath the foot. So I'm going to go from the heel out to the ball of my foot and then back. And I, you know, basically going side to side, trying to explore through that soft tissue underneath my foot to find parts that might be uh, a little bit uncomfortable. You can see that I'm doing this in sitting. We want to try and apply as much pressure as you can tolerate. You can overpressure with your hand, or you can do this in standing, which will increase the intensity. Or you could take a smaller ball like this one. Smaller ball is going to be much more intense, get into those little nooks and crannies. Or if you have this wooden, wooden stick here, you just kind of go roll over that. I've had patients uh, use um, the rolling pins. If anybody bakes and has one of those still lying around, or a frozen water bottles, another one. The cold may help with attenuating that painfulness, that pain there, but the cold really doesn't do anything when it comes to healing tissue. It cuts down on the pain sensitivity because it numbs the nerve, but actually cooling down an area reduces your body's own healing process. So ice is not your friend, it used to be, but the new research shows that it's not. All right, so. Once we get then the bottom part of your foot, then we can start to get into that big toe. What I like to do is get a bigger ball and hopefully you can see it. I'll do this on my other foot here so you can see better, better angle. Just get that underneath my big toe and I'm gonna try and drive my, my ball of my foot, my knuckle down into the ground as I'm pushing my knee forward. And then I should feel a little bit of a stretch to the big toe. All right, so again, soft tissue mobilization or joint mobilizations, we're gonna try and do these for two minutes. Now, at this camera angle right here, you could see my foot, knee, and thigh angle. Whenever we're trying to mobilize the ankle, foot, anything downstream here, as you push your knee forward, we want that knee to line up with the foot, all right? A lot of times, it'll go like that. Again, 
your ankle, if it's tight, will try and look for the path of least resistance. And the way that the ankle is put together, there's a lot more opening when your foot goes, uh, your knee goes in and your foot goes out versus pushing that knee maybe towards a third or fourth toe. Okay, you could probably feel the difference. Pronation, foot collapses, the knee's not in that good position. That causes some knee pain versus going forward straight. We would like that ideally maybe over to your third or fourth toe. All right, so another way to kind of uh, combat that bunion is to manually extend that knee or extend that, that big toe. So let me see, this is probably the best angle. So we could take this big toe and then just take your fingers and then pull it back, right? And if we're looking at the angle, we don't want that angle to be towards the other toes as you pull in. We want to create some space and then extend, okay? If we do that with enough pressure, we might feel a little bit of a stretch down into the bottom part of your foot. Another one I love to do is creating space in the toes. We never do this. We take your other hand and you interlock your fingers and toes together. Try and shove your fingers in and that creates that space in between the, the toes. And that helps to relax a lot of these muscles in there and you can get a good grip and work on ankle motion as you're doing that. I love doing this, especially after a long day of being on your feet. You have to treat your feet with a little TLC. They totally get neglected. That ankle doesn't get enough love either. And we're gonna go into the ankle next. So I'm gonna stand up. And the next thing is, is to try an, another way to mobilize that big toe. I'm gonna to use the leg of my chair here. Let's see if I could just put this up. You can see what's going on. All right. So I'm gonna use this leg of my leg of the chair. I'm gonna put my big toe up as high as I can on that, on that big, on that leg of the chair. And then I'm gonna push my knee forward. So you can see on this camera right here, camera one, how vertical I can get my toe in there. And then I'm gonna push my knee forward. Try to push into a range that I feel comfortable with. And I'm gonna repeatedly do that. So that's again, another joint mobilization, big toe, plantar fascia. And you could do this up against the wall as well, kind of moving forward, back and forth. Maybe if I show you on the low angle, the low camera, camera, that camera, this, side view, we're going in like this. And then we could easily turn this into an ankle joint mobilization by putting my foot up as high as I can. So I'm standing back away from it, right? So I need some space to get into this stretch position. I'm gonna put my foot up as high as I can on that vertical surface, that leg of the chair. And then I'm gonna push my knee forward. Oh, the chair is starting to move. But basically, I'm again doing the same thing, pushing my knee forward, making sure if I'm looking down at my foot, knee and thigh, that at that angle is always in line. I'm not going inside of the foot line and I'm gonna push forward and backward. That should be much more specific for the ankle as I mobilize into there. And I'm gonna do that repeatedly. All right, here we go. So I just have, I just picked up this, uh, this half foam roll. I mean, you can get this at Dick's or any sporting goods store, but you don't really need anything specific or fancy like this. All you need is just something to elevate the front part of your foot. It could be a book. It could be a wooden block. It doesn't matter. So I'm going to see if I can get a good angle here. So it's sort of like this. There I go. Move out my other junk here. And then I'm going to put my foot with my heel planted on the ground. And my, the ball of my foot is going to be elevated. Now, a lot of times people will go into a calf stretch where they're hanging off the edge of a, a step or a curb and their heel is like dangling in the air and they're using all their body weight. What that does is create an opening for your arch to collapse because your heel is unsupported. So yeah, you might feel the stretch, but you're really just making your arch as mobile as you would like. And then you got a flat foot. That's fine. That's cool. You want to do it that way. But I could recommend keeping your heel uh, planted on the ground, keeping an eye on your arch, and then bringing your hips forward. As I bring my hips forward, I should feel a stretch in the calf. The other foot can go anywhere, right? So the farther forward I step with my other leg, my right foot, the bigger the stretch is. Now, here my knee is straight, okay? There's two muscles that we could stretch in the bottom part of the leg. Again, 
Your prescribed hold time for any stretch to elongate soft tissue permanently is 30 seconds. You got to hold it for 30 seconds. Anything shorter than that, we're just going to get a snap back into a shortened position. So the two muscles, gastrocnemius, we stretch that with the knee straight, hip underneath you, nice and tall with the posture. The second muscle is with the knee unlocked, the knee is bent, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to push my hips forward with the knee bent. That stretch should be felt a lot lower than where we felt that previous stretch. This stretches the soleus muscle, which is a shorter muscle underneath the gastrocnemius. So two positions, okay? Let me show you from the front here. Here's my foot. The key thing is that where I put my foot, I want to make sure that I have a good alignment. I lock out my knee. I bring my hip forward. I don't want to see the foot collapse. So if you can keep that arch, take a look at your foot when you're going into this position, maintain the arch of your foot as much as possible as you go into these stretches. Knee straight, 30 seconds. Knee bent, 30 seconds. All right, so those are the calf stretches.